guys, welcome back to the channel. So, following on from the ball testing we've done mm. recently, and we've done quite a lot of ball testing of the X line of golf balls, then the standard softer golf ball offerings from uh, most of the major manufacturers. By far and away, mm. the uh, most requested head-to-head -head test that you guys wanted to see has been between the Pro V1 and the TaylorMade TP5. Yes. So okay. we've done the Pro V1X and TP5X, mm -hmm. as well as some other ones, Chrome Soft X and such. But mm -hmm. when you read the comments on any ball video, there are so many that say, please do the head-to-head -head of Pro V1 and TP5. Correct. So we want to give you guys the best data we can about these two balls. And dive into these a little bit more. Mm. You know, and it's been really interesting any time we've done the, the kind of four and five ball tests, multiple kind of golf balls. Um, you've kind of got, we've found we've had our extremes uh, of you know, whether it be AVX being significantly lower spin. And, right. and uh, I think we found Chrome Soft to be extreme higher spin. Yes. What, you know, the one thing I've always found was interesting was how close these two golf mm. balls always were to one another For sure. in, in performance. And um, I, I love this test because I think there's so many golfers out there use both of these golf balls. Yeah, and so much in the media with TaylorMade's obviously amassing just a crazy roster of players, mm -hmm. Tiger included. I know sure. Tiger's not using the ball. Yep. But you've got all these ads with DJ and Rory and Justin Rose and Jason Day talking about how much TP5 is their mm -hmm. ball or TP5X. Uh, probably all of them used to be Pro V1 players, um, mm -hmm. I would think. Yeah, it's just about at some all of them. Point. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm sure at with, some point they've all maybe one or two occasions. But I think that's where they've. Pi I mean, they're putting a ton of marketing into it, obviously. But yeah. it's obviously a very good ball. Um, mm -hmm. I've played it on the course quite a few times. I find it to be a good ball as yeah. well. And I think the question people ask is, okay, is it, is it really better in the wind? Is it really going longer off the driver? Is it spinning as much as a Pro V1? Because a Pro V1 is the gold standard. You yeah. know, your standard Pro V1 is the ball. Yeah. It's going to win the ball count every week at every amateur event and probably always will. Yeah, true. Um, so I think that's got to be the reason why. And th this is kind of like your contender, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. Sure, yeah. Your contender, yeah. despite it being from the biggest company in golf. But yeah. um, I think people just want to see is, is the hype you know, justify it. Yeah, is can, it really that back good? It up? Yeah. Well, that that's the thing, and and TaylorMade kind of went after the ball category with with their usual um, intention of mm. adding innovation uh, to to obviously you know to create the substance through the innovation and mm -hmm. and you know to be uh, the first company in golf to make a five layer golf ball. Yep. When when the Penta came out all those years ago, um, was was really interesting. So I mean, I was still working for the time when the Penta uh, released and. You know the, the the big story was about sort of layer separation and mm -hmm. and obviously compression and you know wh however deep you got into the golf ball in terms of your compression the ball would perform slightly differently okay so you know you compress it with a driver and a square face you're going to get down to layer number five and the driver mm -hmm. performs like x if you get down to layer number two the ball will launch and spin like so if that more like a wedge sort of thing because you're not comp oh, okay. uh, creating as much compression yep so you know the layer separation and how the the ball performs is, is is that's that's why they do that. So they want to have the ball be activated differently with a seven Correct. iron and a three wood and a driver. That's a good way to describe yeah. it. Activating uh, certain uh, performance characteristics based on on how much compression you achieve. Interesting. Yeah. So um, one of the things you you notice when you look at the two golf balls side by side, guys, is the the, the dimple patterns on mm. the covers. Are, are quite different as well. The yeah. TP5 has extremely large dimples yeah, uh, relative to uh, to other golf balls in the market. Um, this is what golf ball companies call the aerodynamics package. So how they want the ball to fly um, will be determined by obviously how the cover, uh, the dimples interact uh, right. through the air. And that's one of the things that I think they're getting a lot of press about is mm -hmm. it's good in the wind. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think we'll talk numbers wise why that might be in terms of like your dry ball data. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be something going on with the dimples that's allowing it to fly through the wind a bit. Because there's so many people saying that it's got to have some truth to it. Mm -hmm. It must be some advantage to it in terms of it getting through the wind a bit better. For sure, for sure. That's, that's what a lot of these golf balls uh, kind of have as their sort of advantage. And it's the one thing that we can't un unfortunately show too much yeah. of in here. Um, yeah, we will yeah. eventually, but yeah. yeah, not right now. Once we get outside and yeah. we, we can sort of standardize some, some things with the testing, then we will definitely mm. want to show you guys an independent ball test. Um, 
but you know, I think for for the like you said, dry ball and and sort of controlled environment data, what what we've got is is really uh, it's quite interesting and it quite is. consistent. Uh, Very as consistent. Well. Yeah. So let's kind of go through the numbers here. So starting with the wedges, we saw TP5 launch fractionally higher, mm -hmm. and it spun uh, fractionally more as well. Yeah, just uh, about a couple hundred RPMs. A couple hundred more. RPMs, but similar, 200 yeah. RPMs. Is it the point where we kind of would struggle to see, is that performance or person or player variance? Yeah, I didn't hit 100 shots with each with each wedge. Mm -hmm. So obviously my personal strike and swing, I would say would account for any difference. Right. Probably perform almost exactly the same on the wedge. Yep. Just maybe a fraction higher launch. I did notice the initial launch being a bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's something to do with the composition of the ball, the layering system, but right. it seemed to, and we'll see it as we go down, mm -hmm. it seemed to have a little bit more launch angle uh, than the Pro V1. Yeah, yep. So, um, no, but close. Very close. close. Like visually almost the same. Yeah. Uh, so into seven iron, we saw half a mile an hour ball speed difference uh, in favor of the TaylorMade, and we saw again higher launch. So mm -hmm. you know, wedge and seven iron, the TaylorMade has come out higher twice. Yep. Um, this time though, it's lower spin. Yeah. So a little higher launch, a little lower spin. Yeah. A little couple more hundred distance. RPMs being the 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 variance in that, so not too much. Uh, into the driver, we are about a mile an, a mile an hour faster with the Pro V1 this time, mm -hmm. but it's a higher launch again with TP5. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, we did. I think the consistent story was the launch angle being just a touch higher, mm -hmm. and generally speaking, I think people will see this spinning a fraction less. Right, the TP5. The TP5. Mm -hmm. So, and and that's in keeping with what you hear. People are saying, oh, I'm hitting the TP5 mm -hmm. a little bit further. It yeah, goes yeah. a little further for me with my irons and my driver. Makes sense. I mean, if you if you need a little spin mm -hmm. reduction, which you would say a lot of people probably do, yeah, um, you're probably going to pick up a couple yards going to a ball like that mm -hmm. versus a Pro V. Definitely, but definitely. it's yeah, they're so close. It's close, though. isn't they're it? So I mean, close. You're not going to be disappointed with either of no. these golf balls if you're in the right category. Um, you're probably you know if yeah. you if you get tired of playing one and you feel like just changing up, you know you're safe. probably you're safe to go with 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 either ball in this in this category. Um, there's there's really not too much to choose. I mean, it's interesting this year. Obviously, the change in uh, Pro V1 yes. towards trying to be a, a more driver friendly golf ball uh, than it has been in the past. A lot of people f has, have felt in the past that, and certainly the tour players being the, the major ones mm -hmm. with that concern, was that it spun too much off right. the driver. So now uh, it is it's. You know they, they have designed it with that in mind. They've really addressed that it seems yeah. so that it keeps up with a lower spinning ball. And we've seen that in our test now where yeah. it's, it's as low as, as any any of the other golf balls in the market so um, yeah you're, you're just you're just not going to be disappointed with e either no. of these golf balls. Feel wise I didn't notice a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, they're both softer than their X counterparts sure. as we were yeah, doing that testing. From a standpoint yeah. Um, Chrome soft Regular is a softer ball than these, I would mm -hmm. say, but I don't think that's surprising to anyone mm -hmm. either. Yeah. Um, but no, I can't imagine someone having any issue going between the two. No, um, very similar. And I would be happy to play TP5 because I think as someone who's not great in the wind, mm -hmm. it would be nice to know that you might get through it just, just that touch better. For sure. Um, and hopefully we can get outside with the track man at some point and sort of confirm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I mean, it's I think it's a part of ball testing that the general public has never really had proper access right. to. We've ha all had access to this kind of data to some mm -hmm. degree, yeah. but have we ever seen, you know, um, you know, there's a crosswind of 10 mile an mm -hmm. hour, launch the ball exactly the same, which ball moves more, kind of, kind yeah, of testing cool. would be cool to see what actually occurs. Yeah, I mean, I was out at, uh, at Ping headquarters in, uh, in Phoenix a few years ago, and, mm. and they are one of the very few companies in golf that have uh, a, a ball cannon and don't have a golf ball in the market. So that makes okay. them slightly different in that they don't have any skin in the game to say our ball's better than the rest, you know, and our ball can and show. So, mm. so they when they do their test and they're doing it from a, a standpoint, okay, you know, we want to test with the very best golf ball with our clubs when we're testing our our products. Interesting. So uh, at that time, the the feedback from those guys was that, uh, and this 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 might be a little shocking to some people because. I think Titleist has had a bit of a bad rap uh, mm. in, the, in the market. They said Pro V1 X was the most consistent golf ball that they had tested. Mm. The number two was a Bridgestone ball. Really? Yeah. Which is and on our list. Yeah, on our list. We're, we're, we actually have some coming our way. Perfect. Um, and the number three most consistent ball in all the testing they had done at that time was the Pro V1, the standard one. Wow. 
Yeah. I think that's cool because the comments, rightfully so, especially when we did the budget ball. So mm -hmm. we did Vice and all these ones. Yep. People were asking, okay, they seem to perform kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Is there a consistency difference? Is there a manufacturing difference? That, what you just said, mm -hmm. leads me to believe yes. Because if it's that mm -hmm. consistent in the way it flies, they've yeah. got to be doing something a little bit better. Titleist have a, a, a sort of patent list uh, or, or sort of a, a patent sort of um, you know, range that's that. Yeah, thing. they have just a, an encyclopedia right. of stuff. They do. Yeah. Some of them have patents that are, are, are mm -hmm. that thick. They've got a few. Um, Titleist put so much R&D time and dollars into their golf ball. Like it's it's always going to you'll never find it not being one of the top performers. Gotcha. It's just not going to happen. And we and we haven't seen that either. It's always at least yeah. as good as everything else. The the point of the matter is their golf ball costs in our markets about sixty dollars a dozen. Yes. Uh, it costs that price because the marketing that they put out there mm. uh, in order to get players to obviously get it on the golf channel to get it where they get it. You know, these other brands that are coming into the market at $30 and $35 a dozen, they don't carry that marketing budget. So no. they obviously they can charge a bit less and you're going to get a great ball. Yep. But, you know, if we're talking performance and, and dollars are off to the side, you're going to find a really good ball in a Pro V1. You're right. going to find a really good ball from TaylorMade. Um, that, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, if anything, we've learned from all these tests. There's so many good golf balls at this mm -hmm. point. As you've said, pick your budget. Mm -hmm. There's there's going to be at least a few things yeah. that are a great choice for you. Yeah. And if you're not a plus five handicap, especially, definitely. you may not really be noticing yeah. much of a difference between a ball that's ten bucks cheaper. Definitely, definitely. And uh, and as we do, we actually we really need to do the full ball fit on camera. Yeah. So uh, I'd love to see so that. so people can kind of really see what it is that we do because. One thing that's quite difficult to do is feel the difference between uh, all your all the golf balls when you test them on different days on the golf course. Mm. When you're doing it in here, you're literally going, okay, here's one, okay, here's a different one, here's a different Switching one. So you're you're literally in the moment with the feel still in your hands from the previous golf ball. So you can go, yeah, actually, I really don't like that feel of that Chrome Soft, or, okay. or you know, I love the feel of the Chrome Soft, whatever your preference may be for it, mm -hmm. you know. But you have the instant feel in your hands, and I think that's, that is interesting. I think that's uh, really important towards you guys dialing in the performance and the feel uh, to get the, the ball that just plays overall the best for you. Yeah, that's the one full fitting session we've never done on camera. Interesting. So we'll need to do that one. Well, we'll certainly, uh, that's, that's going to get added to the list for the next couple of weeks. Add to the list, it's getting yep. longer. <laughs> so uh, guys, moral of the story is these two golf balls perform about as similar as two golf balls will perform mm. from two different companies. That's That's been my take on it for the last few weeks. I've seen it mm. through all the multiple ball testings that we've done, and again, just doing it head to head. You know, they're, they're really, really similar. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, you know, we're, we've seen that. So, you know, there's not a bad choice amongst them. Yeah, yeah, Excellent. absolutely. Good. Guys, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave your comments below. Um, hopefully this has addressed the guys who wanted to see the Pro V1 versus TP5. Yeah. Um, you know, ball testing might taper off a little bit, with the exception we, we want to do our mid-price so range the golf mid, ball. Yeah, the mid-price, mid-range ball yeah. is kind of be our next big test. That's our big test and coming we're gonna, up. Yeah. We'll go the premium nuts, golf balls will probably, we'll we'll probably on covered a, uh, a little bit on, on that one over the last uh, three or four weeks. So mid-price range golf ball, guys, those who are waiting for that one, it's coming. Uh, it's coming. Strix and dropped off uh, some Q stars and soft feels to me last oh, nice. week, soft which is feels, good. Yeah. We have some NXTs. Uh, we've we've got to pick up a few other balls from a few other companies, but yeah. um, we're starting to gather the, the golf awesome. balls to do that. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, it'll be good fun.